thing. I'm going to do my best to answer a few of the questions that some of you have about what it's like to camp in a camper van. So I guess the first would be to say that it is nimble. That's our favorite thing. That's a new word that we use a lot, but it's very, very nimble. I arrived here at the Fort Hamby campground and the gentleman told me that a lot of the campground is underwater and we have no electricity. We only have a few sites and you may not fit. But then he looked at the camper van and said, now nah, you'll fit. And he gave us a really big site that we could pull up into. And that's one of the big positives. No matter where we go, we can always fit. And we don't need electricity to be okay either. So when we're in a fifth wheel, it's just the opposite. So then you gotta worry about, well, can I fit into a place? And in some of these little campgrounds, can I get around some of the turns? And can I, can I meander back into the road? And once I get there, can I, uh, can I get up into the actual site? You know, if the car is on the side of the road or there are trucks around or anything else, sometimes it's a little bit hard to do that. So that, that's one of the biggest pros is that no matter where we go, you may worry about things when you're camping and you're on the road. But if you're in a camper van, you don't really worry about whether you're going to fit or whether you're going to be able to find the spot. The number two reason we really love the camper van is the fact that Lynn can drive. She never really felt comfortable towing the fifth wheel or driving the motorhome, but she feels really comfortable driving the, the little 21-foot camper van. Do you miss having a tow vehicle? Do you miss having your truck and having your fifth wheel parked somewhere? Or do you miss having the motor home and pulling your tow vehicle behind it? And the answer is no. Not yet anyway. Uh, there are times when it may be nice to leave your, your camper there to save a spot maybe. But as far as leaving and coming and going, it just takes no time at all. Lynn and I have learned, don't get out anything that you don't need to use right then. And when you do get something out, like the grill, when you finish using them, put them up. And that way, when you're ready to go, the most you'll have to do is put the awning in and disconnect the electricity and put that up. And then you're on the road. And then the good thing is, when you get to where you're going, you're gonna have your house with you. So like when we went to the top of uh, Clingman's Dome, and we got up there, it was in the low 50s. But that didn't matter because in the closet we both had raincoats and sweaters and jackets and we got comfortable and kept going. But if we'd been in a car and it was 78 when we left and we weren't smart enough to figure that out, we probably would have frozen. So I guess the answer is it's actually better that you don't have a tow vehicle in most situations. Another question we get asked all the time is what about fuel mileage? And see, I said fuel mileage instead of gas mileage because I'm used to having a diesel truck. And without towing something, the diesel truck would get 21 or 22 miles per gallon. But if we're towing even the small fifth wheel, the, the uh, 32 foot fifth wheel, we were lucky to get 12 or 13. But in the camper van, what we found so far is we're getting anywhere from 16 to 18 all the time. Uh, that's a significant savings in miles per gallon, but it's not diesel either. So we don't have the cost of the diesel exhaust fluid, and we don't have the cost of the more expensive diesel. So it's a tremendous savings. And I'm a little out of breath because these hills here on this mountain lake pretty steep and Maggie and I are meandering our way back to our pretty little campsite about another one of the things that we really like about this particular camper van and I did not think we would like it it's the refrigerator this is our sixth RV and we've had issues with refrigerators the kind that are evaporative refrigerators we've had issues with Almost every RV we've had, you have to be level, you can't be one way or another, and, and it takes a long time for it to cool off, and I know that it uses LP, and it might be a little more efficient when you're boondocking, but I'm just not sure about that. When we got this one, it looks really small. It looks like, you know, it's just a, uh, 
a dorm refrigerator. But when you when you open it up, and that's another thing that I really like, it's a little latch to keep the door from flying open. But when you open it up, it goes way back. I mean, it's it's like way past your elbow back. I know that's you've heard other people say that, but I mean, it's you can get drink after drink after drink and things in here we've never run out of room and we like it a lot do we miss the great big refrigerator we have in the fifth wheel yeah sometimes i mean it's 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 good to have you know one that's huge and a double door and you know a big freezer to put a bunch of ice cream in but can you get everything you need for three or four days of fun and food and snacks into this refrigerator you bet you do you use sheets or do you use sleeping bags? And how do you do that? Well, <laughs> we wrestled with that a lot. Uh, in fact, if you want to look at a few other videos, I'll put links to those. We bought two different types of sleeping bags and tried to make those work. Um, and we finally ended up with a conventional setup like you would have at home. We have, we have a, you know, a fitted sheet and we have a top sheet and then we have a very thin a synthetic down blanket and you can take the blanket off if it's warm at night uh, and then add it as it gets cooler or you can have both of them on there and for us that works really really well maybe two to three minutes to make up the beds in the morning and then you're you're finished and you know when we come in at night we just lay on top of the covers just like it was a, a sofa watch tv or read or whatever we're doing and and it's really really um not a problem and I've heard others that that you know are more of the camper van life guys um, say that having a top sheet's a waste and 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 maybe it is for some what what a lot of people recommend is a, a comforter with a duvet I, I always get duvet and bidet mixed up I know one keeps your bottom warm and one cleans your bottom but I, I just don't even know which one is which so so don't, don't look to me for answers for that we have a very simple setup which is just a quilt blanket a sheet and pillows and a fitted sheet that works for us you may like to get a duvet and that that might be really comfortable it may be really easy to do uh, you might also like, like to get the washing thing too i don't know do you turn the front seats around? That's a really cool feature. You should use that all the time. Well, <laughs> no, we <laughs> we don't turn the front seats around. I mean, I guess we sh we could, and you know, if I were going to work in here, maybe that would make sense, and I could use the table that flips up, and I could make that work and do that. But to be honest, she sits there, and I sit there, and Maggie just goes back and forth, and when we're inside, that's what we do. But also, it, unless it's raining, we're not inside. We, we stay outside. This is a place that the camper van gets us to the place that we want to enjoy. And then we go outside and we enjoy it. And then we come inside to take care of things like changing clothes and going to the bathroom and taking a possible shower, or going, going to bed. Sometimes we eat in here because it's raining outside and we just can't do that. But even when it's raining and we need to eat, we'll usually do as I've done here and put the awning out. But we received the question, how do you keep comfortable at night? What do you do to stay comfortable while you're sleeping? Uh, this person was saying they could not get used to the differences in, in temperature. And I totally understand that. We're very comfortable at home because we have a constant temperature. But this is what we do. It may not be what everybody does, and it may not be the best way, but this is what we found works for us. So we have, I might have close up that. We have a 59K. If you have a 59KL, which is the lithium version of this, then you live in a different world than we do. You've got all the power in the world, and you know, the, don't just fast forward through this and go to another section. But if you've got regular AGM batteries, which we've got two of them, and we have about 100 amp hours that we can actually use um, from those two batteries. So, you know, it'll run a lot of things overnight, but it won't run everything overnight. So this is what we do. If there's not a quiet time, and, I, and this is all assuming that we're, we're dry camping, boondocking. 
but if there's not a quiet time restriction right before we go to bed if it's not too late and we're not too close to anybody else we we'll either crank the engine to the van and cool it off with the ac from the van and then top off the batteries that way or we'll start the generator and start the air conditioner to cool it off then and to also top off the batteries so assume it's 10 30 at night and we're ready to go to bed we will have had the tv on and i will put it back in its position because when we get up we're probably going somewhere and we don't want to have to worry about getting everything ready inside so we always put things up when we finish with them so then what we'll do is we'll leave these two lights on that little light there there's an led light and another little led light over here we'll also turn off the inverter for the night which means we're not going to charge very many electronics overnight what we do is while we're we're driving there are enough usb ports that that will charge while you're driving that will charge our phone and ipads and anything else that we need to do that way so we don't worry about that at night now so depending upon the temperature we'll do different things if it's in the 60s and it's comfortable outside and cool all we'll do is turn on the max air fan we'll turn that guy on and we'll turn him on low you know somewhere there's as low as he'll go i'll go up about three notches and that's what we normally do if it's warm outside and humid we also off of amazon we have a little usb fan that uses hardly any power at all and if it's hot outside when we go to bed and we need to to dry camp but we want to stay cool we can turn this guy on and he'll use hardly any power at all and you can tell how quiet it is and that's pretty much it this combination works really really well for us with the fan because as you can see this keeps us cool it pulls a lot of air in the air will get circulated by the max air fan and, and pulled out and we stay really comfortable at night one other thing you can do to help with air circulation if you don't want to open up the back doors which that's always a possibility if you want to do that but in here in the bathroom we have a vent you can open that vent and once you do the max air fan will suck air through there what we've learned is you don't want to turn that fan on though first of all it's not very efficient so it's going to bring the battery down and second it kind of competes with the max air fan so it's sucking air both directions and it doesn't seem to work as well so what works best for us is to open that vent but not turn the fan on let the max air fan do its job and it's extremely efficient and works really well let me tell you about a few things that we wish were a little bit better on the van I guess the first thing would be outside storage. Um, I wish there was more. I actually wish there was some. Uh, there's none. We're not used to that. It's a trade-off. And I guess with everything, there, there's, a, there's a give and take with everything you do. To be so small and nimble, the thing you give up is outside storage. And on the van, there's just not any outside storage at all. There's a trailer hitch receiver down here. And... Um, ours has a ladder and there's a little bit of space up top others have put a, a box up there Lynn and I've actually put the um, stand-up paddle boards on the ladder along with the things we needed uh, in fact we took them on the last trip carried them everywhere we went never took them off the ladder never used them uh, so taking things um, becomes a you have to make a decision what can you take and what should you take um, you can also get a storage box to go on the receiver hitch um, and put it back there. But the problem with that is all of a sudden now your 21 foot van might be 23 or 24 feet. You're not going to fit everywhere. So what you have to do is decide what you want to take, what's important, what's most important for the trip that you're going on this time. And, and that's what you take. Uh, to me, it's an okay trade-off. The other thing that's not quite a positive it's not really a negative and i'll tell you why in just a minute we have really small tanks having really small tanks is 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 not really a it would seem like it would be a negative but it's really not the reason is 
you're always driving out. You know, you think about it, you've got your, your camper, you know, I'm surrounded by campers in here, and if these guys want to empty, they literally have to hook back up, pull back out to the dump station, do their dump, and come back and set their camp back up. With us, we're always leaving in the camper. So it's really simple just to pull through a dump station and do a dump before we leave or when we get back. And so having smaller tanks is never really a hindrance to us. We haven't dry camped yet for a long extended period of time out in the middle of nowhere. And I guess that's when it might be a problem. But for right now, being in a campground, it's, it's just not an issue at all. Small tanks are not something you should worry about. If you don't believe me, you can ask Maggie. Are small tanks really something you should worry about, Maggie? You don't think so? Do you hear the squirrels and the birds? She loves being out here. She loves it a lot. So do we.